everyone. I am Sarjeet. Um, you are in the in demand business business analyst in demand Facebook group. You may also be watching this on YouTube. Um, at least um, twice a month, if not more, we uh, I come on here and I provide live training for you guys um, and the opportunity to ask questions. If you're watching this on a replay or after the fact, please leave your questions if you have any in the comments area and I will get back to you. Um, so today's topic is how do you gather requirements, okay? So let me, uh, typically uh, when you're looking at job descriptions or transitioning into a business analyst role, lots of times you'll see in the job description, you know, have the ability to gather requirements. And that's the core responsibility as a business analyst that you'll have is to work with your stakeholders to gather those requirements. So you guys may be wondering, what does gathering requirements even mean, right? So if you think, step back and think of a business analyst role, um, primarily we're working on IT systems. We're sometimes also working on defining processes for our business owners or our stakeholders. If you step back and think about what it is that you're doing as a business analyst, right? You're um, either building or enhancing systems or documenting pro business processes. All you're doing is gathering information from your business folks who know the systems and the business. Uh, they may not know the systems, but at least they know their business inside and out. So your goal as a business analyst is always to document and understand what your stakeholders or your business partners are trying to do, right? What is their day-to-day -day role? How are they utilizing systems or how could they be utilizing systems? So lots of times um, as a business analyst, you'll be working on internal systems. And then you may also be working on systems that have been purchased by the company. Uh, systems, for example, like um, Salesforce. Um, um, you know, there's many other uh, systems out there, many companies that provide software and so, uh, services and solutions for companies to purchase. So if you're working as a business analyst, you may be working on enhancing existing systems or building, you know, new systems in-house for the company that you're working for. You may also be supporting your business partners on a software or a solution that has been purchased by the company to support them. Okay, I'll pause there to see if there's any questions and let me know if you guys can hear me okay. Any questions so far? No. Okay, thank you Ravi. So then let me share my screen. I've created a, a small PowerPoint presentation for you guys. Um, so uh, let's talk about, uh, you know, how do you gather requirements? So um, what I just talked about is in a nutshell, as a business analyst, what you're doing is you're communicating with your business partners most of the time and also your IT teams in understanding what the system needs to provide, uh, what functionality will be used, um, and how will um, our stakeholders be utilizing um, some of this functionality, right? Let me just minimize this. Okay. So the techniques in gathering requirements, there's many, there's uh, typically um, seven or eight um, techniques that you can use as uh, to gather these requirements. Uh, some of these are listed here. Interviews are the most widely used. Then we have chat sessions, interface analysis, observation, brainstorming surveys, or review past documentation. And what that means is these are different ways that you will be going to your business stakeholders or your you know, key stakeholders and trying to understand how they'll be utilizing systems or processes, right? As I mentioned, interviews are the top most widely used uh, mode of um, us gathering and working with our stakeholders just because it allows you to ask questions one-on-one, -on -one, right? Um, oftentimes, um, if you're working in the waterfall environment, you'll have a group of stakeholders that you'll be working with to gather these requirements, right? And then if you're uh, working in the agile environment, you're typically interfacing with your product owner, and you may also be working with stakeholders um, as, you know, depending on the project that you're working on, uh, depending on how um, your 
product owner is interacting with the project team. For example, sometimes if the product owner is not widely available, you may uh, be interfacing with stakeholders even in the agile environment. So interviewing is um, a process where you're meeting with your stakeholders, uh, sometimes in group sessions, sometimes one-on-one, -on -one, and talking to them about the system itself. What are their daily needs, right? How are they using the system today? Is there a system today? Day that they're using, how are they um, intend on using it? What is their role? And after they're done using, you know, uh, performing their job function, who's the next person in line to use the system? So these are some of the questions that are typically asked. There's, um, I think in our group, there's a list of um, interview questions for stakeholders that you can find. Um, but typically that's generally how um, interviews go, uh, interviewing your stakeholders. And then the second thing we have listed is JAD sessions. Typically as a joint application development is what JAD stands for. And typically JAD sessions are bigger meetings where you're including stakeholders from each different, uh, maybe each of the departments. And typically the people that attend JAD sessions are, um, are decision makers, people that can make a decision about the system, software, solution. And those decisions are documented and we move forward. Jazz sessions are typically in an environment where um, there's lots of uh, fast paced moving projects, um, just so, um, and that's the whole purpose. You're inviting a lot of your stakeholders in one room to make those decisions. The next um, way that you can gather requirements is called interface analysis, which means that you're under, you, you get access to the system, you're trying to understand um, and work, uh, you may get a dummy account or you may work and get access to the test environment where you can uh, play around with the system and understand how it's working today. Um, that's a, a very powerful way of learning the system every time, even when I am working and I'm getting into Introduced to new systems or projects, I always want to get test access um, or access to the test environments so I can play around with it and understand how the system's operating. So um, that's another way for you to gather requirements. Observation is another method which um, lots of time people miss. In observation, what you can do is ask your stakeholders to just, you know, watch, um, to have uh, ask your stakeholders if you can watch them, uh, you know, working in the system. So, for example, if we're working on enhancing system X, ask them if, you know, you could come over or even on Zoom, um, watch how they work um, in system X or Y, whatever the system is. Um, and that way you'll get to learn the user perspective and how they're working and interacting with the system. Okay, brainstorming is um, another approach of gathering requirements. It's typically done at the beginning of a project. So typically, you know, if um, you're starting a brand new project uh, and you're thinking about functionality or things to include, um, you may be using, you could use brainstorming um, to jot down ideas. Um, and that way, uh, an, a, another way to um, start your requirements process. Surveys, um, uh, is another popular method. Um, surveys are used when you have stakeholders um, across the globe and you want to know just, um, you know, at the onset, um, very simple things about the system, like is it user-friendly? Um, if you were to make enhancements, what type of enhancements you would make? And I'm sure throughout the course of your um, professional or personal, you know, life, you've taken many, many surveys, right? Um, after you take a course, you'll sometimes have to take a survey. After you, um, you know, when you purchase a product, they typically want to uh, have a survey to understand, you know, um, how the systems, you know, or anything, you know, to gather user feedback. So you could use surveys, um, for example, if you have teams across the world and, you know, they're using the system, you just to get a gauge of how they're feeling um, and the usability of the system you could use surveys for. And the last item I have is to review past documentation. Um, I can't tell you how many times people miss this. 
typically what you're working on is a system or a solution that's been in place for a while. Um, there's been past enhancements or even when they you know, started building it. Um, so there's lots of past documentation that you can go back and review. So I'll pause there for a minute uh, to see if you guys have any questions. Okay, so what do you do, right? Um, so uh, you're on a project, you're working as a business analyst, you're you know, trying to understand and document um, your, you know, let's say you're working on an enhancement. Um, you go through one or two, you don't have to do all of these techniques, right? Um, if you're gonna pick at least one or two, you know, at least one at the bare minimum, um, but you could have two of these techniques. Um, so you're enhancing a system, you're talking to your stakeholders, you're interviewing them, or you're looking at, um, I guess, past documentation. How the next thing that you wanna do is um, analyze requirements. So typically um, when we're working with stakeholders, they'll throw lots of things at you. You know, like they'll say, I want the system to do this and this and this and that. and as a business analyst, right, you're there to document the business need, but then you also have to make sure that what you're delivering um, provides value and is in scope for what we're doing on the project. So what that means is when you're working with your stakeholders, you're going to analyze what they're saying to you and make sure that it fits in to, into the project scope as well as providing value to your stakeholders and to your to the company as a whole, right? So what does that mean? That means that there's different techniques as I have on the screen here, use case diagrams or workflow diagrams or data flow diagrams, sequence diagrams, and even user stories to understand what it is and how the users will be, um, you know, um, uh, interfacing. So for example, if your stakeholders say that I want, I don't know, uh, uh, the system to uh, allow me to generate these types of reports, for example, um, you have to understand and make sure that that report is A, in scope, and B, will provide value not just to that one stakeholder, or um, but to many stakeholders across the company. So just because your stakeholders are saying that they want um, some features, what I typically do is when I start a project, I try to do, um, I use workflow diagrams pretty heavily. So I try to document what they're doing today um, and what their future state functionality will look like um, to be able to understand the, the desired functionality they want, where does it fit into the, to the big picture or the, the future state functionality. Does that make sense, you guys? Yes. Yes. Okay. And only when you guys can do these, you know, analyze your requirements, um, only then can you put it in a BRD if you're working in the waterfall environment. Um, or if you're working in the Agile environment, um, you can then create user stories, which is um, user stories are nothing more than documenting requirements from a user-centric approach. Okay, so just as a recap, um, as a business analyst, um, oftentimes you're asked to document requirements. How do you document those requirements? You, um, you know, there's different techniques as we talked about, interviews, surveys, um, JAD sessions, depending on how your project team is set up, what the goals and objectives of um, your project is, you'll uh, pick two, one to two of those techniques to gather those requirements. Um, gathering requirements is nothing more than talking to your stakeholders about their wants and needs. So it's not like, um, something that's like a, a scary event <laughs> in your professional career. It's just, you know, talking to um, your business folks and saying, hey, help me understand how you do this and what it is that you're looking to do in this system. Um, and after you understand what they're trying to do, go back and create workflow diagrams, which will help you understand and acts even, so once you create those diagrams, you know, even if it's a sequence flow diagram or data flow or even workflow process flow diagrams, 
those will help you understand a how the system works and also be um, go back to your stakeholders with very intelligent questions like um, what needs to happen next who does this data need to go to how will this you know um, what what's the input coming where's you know, where is this data coming from? Where does it need to go? So unless you try to map it out, right? Um, you won't know what questions to ask. And if you're not asking the right questions, you're not documenting them properly, and then you're missing requirements. And that's the gist of it. You can't expect your stakeholders to answer every you know, question or you know, tell you what you need to document. Um, that's your role as a business analyst to understand um, what their future state looks like. And in understanding their future state and their current state, you're documenting that gap um, from current state to future state. Okay, have I confused you guys? <laughs> Uh, so one request from my end. Uh, so if you have a sample uh, with you, if you can please show us, that will be really helpful. Um, uh, I, I can't show you samples just because um, I'm not privy to to disclose my um, uh, you know work documents. But then every document will be different. So it's not that I can talk to you about you know show you a BRD. Um, and show you how those requirements were gathered because it's a process, right? It's not like you can take a template and copy and paste it because every system is different. Every need is different. Every company is different. So um, for that reason, I can't, you know, that's not going to be beneficial to you. Yeah, understood. Make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, but... Um, if you understand how uh, to, so um, the best way I can recommend is um, try to create workflow diagrams, um, like, you know, how you make tea or a cup of tea or a cup of coffee and try to doc, you know, using, you know, um, the basic techniques uh, of a decision point or process flow, like the rectangle shape and the diamond shape. If you can... You know, uh, create a workflow diagram on how you make coffee or something. And then from once you create that workflow diagram, try to write requirements on that. So the user shall get a cup or something, you know, just think of it, it <laughs> turn it around and make it seem as if you're writing requirements for, uh, for making a cup of tea or making a cup of coffee. Um, that's the best way uh, to help you analyze uh, requirements. Does that make sense? Yeah, thanks. Mm -hmm. And if you're looking for samples, just Google um, business requirements document and you'll find lots of samples. What that will do is at least it'll give you the different sections that are in the requirements. So at least you know what sections that you, you know you need to document when you're working on your BRD, if you're working in the agile environment. Okay. What are the? So, uh, yeah. I have a question. Mm -hmm. When we draw diagrams, we use certain shapes like circle or rectangular or triangle. Do they have some uh, meaning like a uh, yes. rectangle? Is Yes. So um, usually an oval um, is uh, either a start or an end shape. The rectangle is for a process. Um, the diamond is a decision point. And uh, when you create diagrams, um, these are these are the most three or four are the most basic shapes that you'll be um, looking at. And again. Um, there's many more like BPMN has lots of very detailed um, and very specific things that they use in diagrams. But if you can understand just the very basic ones, which is the oval, the rectangle and the diamond, uh, you should be good to at least understand when you look at a workflow diagram and also start creating them on your own. Okay. So diamond represents decision, rectangle goes for process and oval is for? Start or end. Start or end. Okay. Yeah. 
That's a great question. Okay, any other questions, you guys? Okay, awesome. All right, so I think um, in our group, we said that the next um, uh, topic is, uh, I believe we said that we there was um, a change in requirements. How do we deal with um, change in requirements? So I think um, probably not next week, the week after we'll talk about um, what do you do when you have change in requirements um, in the waterfall scenario, as well in, as in the agile environment, um, how do you deal with change? And as a business analyst, all you're doing is changing either systems or processes. So uh, you guys should be very, very comfortable and uh, familiar with um, how change happens. So that's another, that's the next topic that we'll talk about. Again, this group is for you guys. Um, if you have questions, um, or if you want um, if something doesn't make sense, let me know uh, and we can create that into a training topic because most likely if you guys have questions on something, um, other people are in a similar situation um, and want to know. So feel free to give me training topics, uh, post your questions in the group. The more active you are in the group, the more that you learn. So uh, please be active. Let me know what other training topics you'd like me to talk about. Okay, with that said, I hope you guys have a great rest of your weekend. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Bye.